300 Christians needed to change the spiritual temperature of this nation forever. Are you one of them? The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God for this end time. You don't have to be a pastor or someone in a leadership position in a church to be part of this great move of God. All you need is a genuine hunger for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is 40 pounds per session. To register, call 0798 114 6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you were called for a time like this. Hello and welcome to the program. Yemi Balogun is my name. And I'll be talking to Pastor Sunday Adelaja, who is a senior pastor of the Embassy of God in Kiev in Ukraine. And still on this program, we're still dwelling on this wonderful book that I keep saying, and not even myself alone, Dr. Miles Monroe of uh, a church in, the church in Bahamas testifies to the fact that the book is going to be a classic, and I believe so too. And we'll be talking about different aspects of the, of the book. So get ready as God will help you and give you understanding to go deeper into the things of the kingdom, so that you yourself will be a reformer, even in your own sphere of influence and in your own generation. God bless you as you continue to watch. Well, I think there is a, is a misunderstanding. When people talk about prosperity message, I think they missed it. Uh, they, there is nothing like the prosperity message in my own understanding. We are only well, there is nothing like prosperity, prosperity gospel. gospel. There is nothing like the prosperity gospel. There, is, yeah, there could be prosperity, prosperity message, but there is nothing like prosperity gospel because the gospel is only one. Every time you read the Bible and you hear the word gospel, it is always being qualified. They always say the gospel of this, this gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, go preach the gospel of what? The gospel is a word for no good news. It's like, go preach the good news of something. For example, if you just say, go preach the gospel, you know, my, if, if your wife is pregnant, that is a gospel to you. You know, it's a gospel, good news that my wife is pregnant. But a gospel of what? Is it a gospel that your wife is pregnant? Or is it a gospel that your wife, you've just married? That's a gospel too. Or is it a gospel that you won some lottery? But So that's why it's always been qualified in the Bible. It's a, go, go preach the gospel of what? So the gospel is only the adjective. The noun, the message, the, the action is the, is the message itself is the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. The good news about the kingdom. The good news of the kingdom. So the, uh, there is only one gospel in the Bible. And that gospel is the good news about the king and his dominion. That the kingdom of God has come, the kingdom of heaven has come to, to the earth. Now that is the only message we all have. There is no gospel of healing. There is no gospel of faith. There is no gospel of prosperity. There is no gospel of deliverance. There is no gospel of prosperity. There is no gospel like that. There is only one gospel. All those things I mentioned, faith, healing, miracles, prosperity, all those things are benefits. Are side effects are consequences of the gospel of the kingdom. 
These are benefits of the kingdom, but you don't turn the benefits to the message. Then you subvert the message. Then you reduce the message. It's just like me talking about my wife. And I say, my wife is a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful wife. Now, if I begin to talk about my wife as a beautiful wife, the word beautiful is the thing that is qualifying, is the word that is qualifying my wife. But if I stop talking about my wife, and I just base my attention on the gospel, I mean, on the beautiful. And, and that means I'm busy, I'm focusing attention on the adjective. And I forget about, at the time you even forget, who are you talking about? It might be beautiful girl, my house girl, my beautiful, you know, secretary. It might be, I forget, it's about, it's, we forget about that it's about my wife. That's where I'm reducing my wife. Although she's beautiful, but I don't overemphasize the beauty of her to her personality. That is, um, uh, she's the one I'm talking about. She's the one I love. She's the one I adore. She's the focus of my attention, of my talk. The same thing with God. We offend God when we forget about him. Him and his dominion and his increase and his expansion. Him and his growth and his influence. And we begin to talk about what he gives. We focus on the hand of God rather than on his face. We focus on his benefits that he gives rather than who he is. We are supposed to reveal him, the, reveal the king, then expand his dominion. Be concerned about being like the king and then directing and promoting his advancement, the advancement of his kingdom. But when we focus on healing, deliverance, big church, blessings, you know, prosperity, all those things, then we are focusing on the, it's like, it's like talking about you. Then I never talk about who you are. I'm talking about your suit, your jacket, your tie, but I never even mention who you are. I don't care for who you are. I've betrayed you. I've let you down. And I've subverted, subjugated you, your personality. God bless you, sir. You know, I've met... Uh, so we only have one gospel. It's the gospel of, the, of kingdom. the kingdom. Hallelujah. That is the only thing Jesus preached. If you look in the Bible, 70, it's 5% of all his messages are all talking about the kingdom of God. All his parables are about the kingdom of God. In fact, he never preached about miracles. He never preached about deliverance. The, or the is only Bible reporting what happens as a result of the pre preaching of the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Those are just reports. But he never focused on them. He was just focusing on the kingdom. Do you know he had more revelations than all of us put together? He knows what is happening in heaven. He could have been talking about those things, but he never did. He restrained himself to, from talking about all the miracles he did, all the testimonies here. He restrained himself from those things to just talk about what matters the values, the characteristics, and the reality of that kingdom. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. If he is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, he had to do that. Who am I? What option do I have? He has paved the way for us. He has shown us the way. That only one message I brought. Please, focus on that. And I will tell you something else about the kingdom. Many people think that the world will come to an end on, no, only because uh, we will see signs of you know, outquake, outquake, outquakes, wars, wars <laughs> volcanic flood, eruptions, you know, all those things happening. Then, the, then people, are, people are expecting all that. Whenever you say and ask people what are the signs of the end time, people will multi, you know, say all those things. But Jesus says, yes, when the end time has come, these things will happen, but that is not yet the end. He says it's the, it's the beginning of pain. That is not the end. That is not yet the end. The kingdom has not, he said that the end has not yet come when those things happen. So then when is it that the end will come proper? He said, but when this gospel of the kingdom, no. not just this gospel, all kinds of gospel have already been preached. The only time in the Bible, go and check it, when the only time in the Old Testament when it says the end has come or the end has will come, it is only when the only factor that determines when the, this world and this generation, this dispensation will come to an end, the only factor that determines is the gospel of the kingdom. Until we return to the gospel of the kingdom, until we begin to preach the gospel of the kingdom, and until this gospel, this, this, this gospel of the kingdom 
This gospel of the kingdom, this particular gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, until it is preached as a witness to all nations, not just any kind of gospel. This one, this gospel of the kingdom is preached as a witness to all the nations of the earth, you know, then the end shall come. Then the end shall come. Then the end shall come. Not just any gospel. Oh. The kingdom message is what determines when the end comes. So the better and the earlier we return to the kingdom message, the faster our Lord could come. Wow. And you know, thank God for your life because what you just shared is crisp and clear. And that's why when I came here and I saw the kind of work going on, on the ground and the way the people of God in your church are taking territories for God and even the plans you shared with me about even the future, I just knew for sure that this is it. Because if we are all doing the same thing in all the different countries we'll of the world, we'll take over the nations of the we'll earth. we take the nations of the earth within 10, 20 years yes. and then Christ will now come and say, yes, you've done it. Let's go. And if, we, if, we, if we're not doing it, then we're in trouble. And at the moment, we're not really doing it. And that's why it's important for a lot of pastors from across the whole world to even just don't worry about what they hear or what they read. Come over to the Ukraine and sit down and go around and see what's on the ground. The model they see on the ground will give them a clear idea what the Bible talked about when it says that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole nations and then the end will come. Then it will, then it will register in their mind that all along they've been preaching the wrong gospel. But now is the real deal. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. And you know, talking about prosperity still, I've met people in your church who came from no ter terrible background, drug addiction, alcoholism. Even last night, I was at the rehab center. I met those inmates. It was unbelievable. And I told them, I said, I'm going to bring a lot of people on drugs from England down here because those ones are on familiar territory. So they refused to change. The leader of the camp here is from Russia. He took us round. And when we went into, they, were in the, they finished having dinner. And they were in the hall. They were studying the, the word of God, the Bible. So when we got there, I was so blessed. So some of them got up to share their testimony. Two of them had AIDS. The fourth category. My God. That the was last category. Last category. Before they were brought to this rehab center. My God. And the two of them have been healed, cleared by medical my, doctors. My God. And nobody's making noise about noise it. I look at your materials. Them, I don't see them. the testimonies. I don't see anything. Because normally, when miracles happen on this scale, in any ministry, when they have a magazine, the testimonies will fill the whole pages for you to know that God is here. But I don't see it in your materials. All I saw was these people got up with so much joy. They said, we have been cleared. God has done a miracle in my life. And the people asked me to pray for them yesterday. I was shocked. As I started praying, these guys broke out in tongues. All of them. The whole place was shaking. I said, God. <laughs> As if they were praying for you. Unbelievable. <laughs> I said, drug addicts, alcoholics, operating on this level. That's when I knew that there's hope. Then the guy at the camp shared something with us, which was so impressive. He said the government appointed a minister, a guy in charge of uh, drug rehabilitation and you know, getting all these drug dealers off the streets. And when he heard what your ministry was doing in this camp, he couldn't believe it. He said, it's not possible. You guys are up to something. Then he came. When he came, he looked around. Then he saw a guy at the camp that he knew on the streets that used to sell drugs. Glory to God. Glory a guy to that God. would normally, Glory to they God. tried to get rid of this guy, but he refused to shift. Glory to God. Then he saw the guy, then he called him. He said, what, is, what are you doing here? Have, have you started another business here? <laughs> and the guy was able to show him that this is, this is this the deal. real deal. This is the real deal. I've been healed, I've been delivered. I'm no more on the streets, I'm here. So that was when that guy was convinced that yes, this center has to be supported, has to, the work has to be encouraged. But thank God, people like that are seeing what God is doing, but some are being used by the enemy to say, listen, we're afraid of this guy because he's taking this nation over. But we know that at the end of the day, God will have his final say. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that I've met people like those guys who came from drug addiction, alcoholism, Many of them have been millionaires now. Business Thank you. Men. I met some of the millionaires. Yeah. And I was asking them, what was it that happened? One of them in particular says he turns over $250,000 every month. And he was sharing with me. He said the thing was that when he, when he was taken off the street by the church, he had nothing. 
He got cleaned and he became a member of the church. But even to get money for transportation to church was very hard. Until then, you started teaching the principles, the principles of, you know, of, of wealth, creation. wealth creation in the church. And so he joined that team and was listening to you and started applying the principles. Then he said something which was interesting, and that's the area I want to go to, because I'm going to come back to ask you how you got these principles in the first place. <laughs> or maybe I should ask you first, how did you get these principles? No, 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 you? let's get back to that. Go <laughs> ahead, what you are doing. He said you taught them the, the, the law of money. Yes. And then also the process of uh, production. Yes. But then the law of money is what I'm interested in because I know that in the West, when I say the West, I mean Western Europe and America, they, when they tell you about prosperity, you have to buy a book, and the book tells you step by step of what you follow. And you follow all the steps, and you're still broke, and even worse than before. But then when he and I asked him about this law of money, what he told me was totally contrary to what these Americans were teaching us. <laughs> so tell me, just in a nutshell, to give the people an, a, a taster of what the, whole, the course is about, the basic principles of the, the law of money, the first three or four laws, can you share with us? Okay, I will give you the first three laws of money. The laws of money. If you don't know the laws of money, uh, people who are wealthy in this world are wealthy not because they are smart. I'm sure that there are millionaires out there that are not as smart as you and I are. You might be smarter than many of them. You are definitely smarter. So for you to become a millionaire, it is not educated people that become millionaires. In fact, there are many educated people out there that are not millionaires. And they are educated. So school and education doesn't make you to be a millionaire. And you know, some people say, oh, you need to believe in God to be, to be rich and wealthy. No, there are a lot of people, guys, who believe in God or who are good Christians and they are not wealthy. In fact, maybe it's the opposite. Of people, most people who are wealthy, they are not even believers at all. So some people say, oh, you need to be a businessman to be a wealthy person or to be a millionaire. Well, I know a lot of businessmen, businessmen that are just struggling to survive. A lot of business people who are involved in business are not even millionaires. So what is it that makes somebody wealthy and rich? It is one thing. The knowledge and the application of the laws of money. Hmm. So what I am teaching is not prosperity gospel. No, I am teaching people the principles of wealth creation or economic empowerment. That is totally different. So it's just a dimension, but it's not the prosperity gospel. It's another thing I could later talk about the difference between prosperity gospel and principle of wealth creation. So the loss of the loss of money. The first number one law of money is this: money. Don't ask me to explain because if I'm going to explain, then we have to do another program about that. But I have a book that maybe has been written. Okay. Maybe we have to do a program about that because I'm going to talk about the book. Okay. Anyway. Because the book is called "Money Won't Make You Rich." We're going to talk about money that. will make you rich. Now, the first law of money is money is not meant to be spent. That's a shocker. I could explain it. Money is not to be spent. Number two law of money. Money is to be retained. That's the number two law of money. I will not explain it now, but when we have the next program, we could do that. Yeah. The third law of money is that you must not obey the dictates of money. <laughs> that is serious. That is serious. It's contrary to a lot of things you hear out there. Yeah. But you know what? I want to encourage you. Stand by. If you want to go on the internet now and you order the book, Money Will Make You Rich, you can go ahead and ahead of us, read it so that when we start talking about it, you have a clear understanding what it's all about, and it will transform your life. Like it's Through these teachings, in two years, we produce 200 millionaires in three years. But how did you get the message itself? I, do you have time for them now? Yes, just I'll give you for five minutes for that. Okay, because I have the, the if you want me to tell you the old stories and explain the principles, we will need one hour for that. I think we should probably oh, do it along with the book. Okay. Along with the, with the, we're talking about the message in that book. Okay. Because that would be a lot, lot better. And I want to really, really bless God for what God is using you to do because you said something to me, just like a child. You say, you know what, this thing you're about to do, you just try it and you'll be surprised what will happen. And you were sharing your own personal life with me. And you talked about how 
when your relationship with God became very deep, it humbled you the more and it made you love God more. That you just this one person in the midst of billions, the God of this whole universe can just come to you and say, okay, you, let's talk. When in reality, you're just a small, tiny dot on this planet. And that is what is humbling about that experience. And that's why I thank God for your life, for encouraging people like myself. And I see you as an encourager more than anything else. A lot of people in the West who don't even have one over a hundredth of what you have in terms of understanding, when they have this sort of experience to share with you, they don't readily share it. They keep quiet and they tell you something, and, or you have to go and serve them. They say, look, like Elisha served Elijah. He was able to follow him to be able to see those things, and that's why he was, when the man left, double anointing. So people are in churches now serving those people, waiting for double anointing, where there's not even any anointing. <laughs> so that's the problem we have. And that's why I want to thank God for your life. So the next few, say two to three minutes, I just want you to just explain to us how crucial being alone with God. I've experienced it. And I've come to a point now where I can see that there's nothing in this world that can stand in the way of that, of that relationship anymore by the grace of God. Because I've, you know, I've seen the difference. I have, I've seen the fellowship. I've seen the tangibility of that relationship. So nothing, nothing, and nothing. Even my wife, I had to tell her, I said, listen, don't stand in my way on this. And when I talk that way, she understands. And I thank God for her life. <laughs> she just took it and she, can, she herself saw the difference. I came back out loving her more. Loving the children more and being to, able to see things better. And I'm a, a far better person than what I was before I went in to be with God. That's right. So what, what can you share with us on that front? Um, I think that it's not worth it trying to do anything for God without His power and His energy. So being alone with God is to recognize your, uh, your limitation and your, um, and your inability to do anything without Him. It's just to recognize your true state. You see, everything has to be sustained by its source. Uh, for example, if I want to repair this table, yeah. it is, I can only repair it through a wood because the table is coming from the wood. So I cannot use metal to repair it. I cannot use no... Uh, clothing or whatever to, to, to material to, to restore it. It will not fit. Everything, everything, what, what, whatever something comes from, textile, like this textile, is coming from the, you know, cloth, clothing. I cannot use wood if it tears or something to repair it. It could only be sustained from the source it's coming from. It's coming from textile. I must use another textile to fix it. Everything is sustained by a source. So if, for example, the banana tree or apple tree or any tree is dying, if it's uprooted from the ground and is dying or uh, fading off, for it to keep, or flower, for it to keep on growing again, you've got to put it back to the soil because the trees and uh, any tree whatsoever is coming from the source, soil. The soil, the ground, is the source of any tree. So if you put it back in the ground, it's sustained. Life comes back to it. That's where it comes from. It's just like a fish that is removed from the river. Uh, and if you put it on, in a concrete or something, it will die. So for, each, for the fish, to, for you to sustain the life of that fish, put it back into the river. Then it will die, it will fly, it will, it just, or the, a bird that is put in a cage, it could die there, suffocate. But when you put it to fly, it, 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 you know, every object, everything, every, all creation is sustained by their source. If, if anything, if you are having problem with anything, find out what the source is. And then relocate them, re, rebuild them, or connect them back to the source. Now, the source of, man, of God is, 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 the source of man is God. The number one source of man is God because God breathed the breath of life into him. So without God, we wither inside, like that tree without soil. We dry. Even if we are saying we are trying to serve God or something, until you have personal relationship with him, the fullness of the life and the energy of, and the breath of God doesn't come into you. That is why, but man has two sources. The other source of man is soil. 
and the man comes from the soil as well. So the soil sustains man also. So what comes from the soil, man must feed on it. That is the f food, vegetable, and everything. So, but being alone with God is to get more life inside you. It's what gives you energy to live and to serve God. God bless you, sir. I want to thank you so much for this time, and I pray that God will sustain you, strengthen you, and use you to the glory of his holy name. Thank you so much. On that note, I want to thank you so much for watching. And you know what? It's not over yet because there's still a lot more to come because we are determined that the kingdom of God must be fully established here on earth. Thanks for watching. I'll be back your way pretty soon. Bye for now. 300 Christians needed to change the spiritual temperature of this nation forever. Are you one of them? The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God for this end time. You don't have to be a pastor or someone in a leadership position in a church to be part of this great move of God. All you need is a genuine hunger for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London. Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is £40 per session. To register, call 0798 114 6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you are called for a time like this.